Coming up next on Tech Now, the Kickstarter rock star. How Amanda Palmer raised a million dollars to make an album. We take a ride with Uber Cab as it makes its customers very happy and very cool. Getting your news in a new way with a boost from your favorite mobile device. And it's the future of shopping. Scanning your body with video game technology to find the perfect fit. From the Tech Museum of Innovation in the heart of Silicon Valley, I'm Scott Budman. This is Tech Now. Thanks for watching. We begin with technology that will change the way you shop. A new way to check your size with a big boost from the video game industry. Here's a peek into the future of retail. I've got the Kimmy boot cut from Seven. It's a little bit more of a mid-rise. No breaking boots. news here. Shopping can be a pain. Even if you know your size, clothes are still something of a mystery. You step inside the scanner. But what if you knew your exact measurements? In a way, only a high-tech, futuristic body scanner could tell you. And I think it's going to make people pause and wonder. To what's that? That is the 3D scanner from Body Metrics, the first of its kind in America, sitting inside the Bloomingdale's at Stanford Shopping Center, where 16 sensors, direct from the Microsoft Xbox Connect, scan you, sending the results to your iPad to help you shop faster and more efficiently. How do you know what gene you know, fits you? How do you know what gene makes you look? good. So it's really what we try to do is, you know, by doing this body mapping process, you actually help to find that one or two genes that actually is going to fit on Flatty. Body Metrics admits it's inspired by Apple, and this looks a little like what Apple might make if it made 3D body scanners. By bringing the technology element into it, it hopefully solves a problem for, for a woman to really find that coveted pair of genes. And that's really what we're hoping to, to offer the customer. As for privacy concerns, yes, your measurements are taken. Then you can either delete them or keep an account and shop from home. Once your body is mapped in one store, you can go to other stores and you can go online and actually shop for garments that fit you. Think of it as a futuristic fitting room that will make you a more well. accurate shopper. Now the coolest use of technology you'll ever see, how supercomputers are being used to make a better ice cream. Ice cream on a hot day, we think of it as one of summer's most simple pleasures. <laughs> Who knew that this simple pleasure is actually so complex you need a supercomputer to understand it. If you zoom in on these substances and if you were able to view them at a microscopic level, you would see that they're actually made up from quite complicated structures of um, different materials. Scientists at the University of Edinburgh in Scotland are studying ice cream with the help of Silicon Valley technology to make it even better. It's a program using Cray supercomputers packed with NVIDIA processors to change the physics of what they call soft matter. The same machines used to track weather patterns and model nuclear explosions, firing away to improve the taste, texture, and shelf life of your favorite dessert. So to get down into the, to the details of doing simulations and, and modeling the world as we know it to better understand it, you've got to have a lot of compute power. It's not just a laptop. It's, or if you used a laptop to generate some of these computations, it might take five lifetimes, and we don't have time to do that. Now, lest you think money and resources are going towards research only about ice cream, fear not, the supercomputer results can also be applied to other everyday items. So if we can control the way phase separation occurs and those kinds of things for ice cream, we can leverage it into all kinds of other more important technologies as well. So this research is actually applicable to a wide range of fuels, um, such as things like engine oils, paints, foodstuffs like sauces, mayonnaise, ice creams, yogurts, um, cosmetic items like soap, shampoo. You probably don't associate ice cream with physics, or for that matter, supercomputers. But because there are people who do, the future of ice cream is a little tastier and a little cooler. More ice cream now from a darling of the tech industry. Here's Tech Now's Joe Rosado Jr. on a company that will give you both a ride and a treat. We live in a time where people seem to want what they want 
when they want it. Take, for example, the San Francisco tech company, Uber. We're an on-demand car service, um, specializing in getting people a ride when they need it and uh, at the push of a button using a smartphone app. With a click of the company's app, you can summon a town car or a limousine to pick you up. This system that we've built to provide on-demand rides can go so many places, and um, there's a, a great um, opportunity for on-demand anything. To demonstrate that point, the company today switched up its format a bit. Instead of a car, you could call for a cone. For one day only, the simple push of an ice cream symbol on the company's app brought the services of an ice cream truck. For six hours, five trucks fanned out across San Francisco peddling ice cream on demand. I punched it in, set in our direct, our, where our location is, and came to us. The fact it wasn't exactly ice cream weather didn't even seem to bother anyone. We have a coworker who's just getting married, and um, what better way to celebrate it than have ice cream for the entire office? For ice cream vendor Lauren Cates, the business has come a long way from the days when she'd simply drive through neighborhoods playing music. People can tweet me or IM me on Facebook or call me and I'll come make deliveries. While everyone may love ice cream, not everyone likes Uber's car service. Cab companies say the model is unfair and stealing their business. Uber does not provide any cars. They don't have, uh, they don't provide the insurance for their vehicles. They are not responsible for screening their drivers. Uh, all of these things we do. At the same time, people say technology has fueled an expectation of convenience. You have all these convenience services and you can just arrange them from your phone or whatever and uh, have them come on your schedule and all that. So whether it's a ride, a drumstick or anything else, satisfaction is now only a button away. Thanks, Joe. In case you're wondering, Uber tells us its biggest traffic day is Sunday on both the East and West Coasts. After all that ice cream, a way to check your health. And yes, there's an app for that. Here's Tech Now's Marla Tejas. So we, we half joke here at Health Tap and say that on the internet, every headache becomes a brain tumor in four clicks or less. In our web-driven world, getting dependable answers fast is a must, especially when it comes to a mystery cough or persistent pain. A survey by Pew Internet finds 8 in 10 internet users have looked online for health information. So one man decided to make these searches healthier. When they told us that whom they really trust is physicians, we decided to change everything and f bring physicians for the first time to interact with patients online. So this is a mode of actually browsing health up. Ron Gutman is revolutionizing online healthcare from this small startup in Palo Alto. Just over 20 employees, a mix of engineers and physicians, make up HealthTap. It's an online network of more than 12,000 doctors in 112 specialties who will answer your health questions in minutes any time of day. And it's all at the convenience of your tablet or smartphone. So not only that we are likely to answer your question, but we actually are likely to give you an answer from a physician that practices in an area that is most related to what you're asking. Simply asking a question and getting an answer in real time is free. We tried it. During our visit, we asked a general question about having a headache and fever. Ten minutes later, Yes. Excellent. So uh, <laughs> we just got an answer. Yeah, we just. You can also opt to have a private online conversation with a doctor. That costs less than ten dollars. You can exchange files with them. You can exchange pictures with them if you need to. And more than just you know reading an article on the internet, you can have a conversation with a real physician, with a real U.S. licensed physician about you and not about the condition. Some might say it's ironic that Gutman is using the high-tech world to take us back to the good old-fashioned days. Again, going back to what was really powerful in the age of house calls, in the age where doctors actually did come to your house. Thanks, Marla. Speaking of mobile, we have a mobile game update. The popular Siftio cubes are newly crafted. There are new games. You no longer have to hook the cubes up to your computer, and they're more touch sensitive. If you're interested, the kit costs $130, 30 bucks each to add additional cubes.
Meanwhile, we know there's big money in banking, but the hot spot for your investments could be rock and roll. A popular musician went on Kickstarter recently and raised a ton of money for her next album, then came here to thank her investors. Sun to light burst, to light burst, to light loose in the bunk. It's a concert that looks a little like a campfire. The butcher stops and winds his watch. Fitting for Amanda Palmer, who doesn't just play for her fans, she plays among them. They love her shows. They send her portraits she exhibits at her shows, and they love her accessibility. I got into music so I could connect with people. And she connects with 600,000 Twitter followers and a new album completely funded by fans who invested a staggering $1 million through Kickstarter to back Palmer up. It feels really good to be able to say to an artist, I love your work, I would love to see what you're going to do next, and I'm willing to invest in your art and tell you that I really love what you do, and I can't wait to see what you'll come up with. My Kickstarter would not have worked without Twitter. So she tweets and plays and hugs. This guy literally ripped his Navy patch off and gave it to her. He, like everyone else here, invested in Palmer's album. This is what happens to me. He just ripped this off his jacket and gave it to me, and I like burst into a puddle of tears. To be in a private venue with this woman who I've, the entire four years that I was at sea in the Navy, just listened to, you know, trying to escape the, well, just being at sea. I got a picture of your mom. Palmer's following would make even bigger artists blush, and she does it without record company support, relying instead on Silicon Valley technology to stay in touch. The tools of the internet right now, the Twitters and the Kickstarters and all of the social networking tools are like a godsend because it's, it's literally it, it literally means that we can host us a party with the world. Because anyone who's behind a computer is a guest. And off she goes to host a party, taking time to hug the investors who make it happen. For those who invested in Amanda's album, $1 got you a digital download of a song. $300 investors were treated to the concert we just showed you. Stay with us when Tech Now continues. We go one on one with the CEO of a startup using technology to bring you your news in a new way. And why Next Door says Facebook is too big. It wants you to get to know your neighbors. Welcome back. News is everywhere on the web. Fortunately, companies are doing what they can to bring your news together in one place. News 360 is one of those companies. Robin Karachinsky is the CEO. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Tell me why you've got this app that can bring all this information in one place. Well, at some point in the past when we were just starting out, we figured out that there was a problem that people have, which is that there's too much information coming at you. There's, you know, you have to, before we started News 360, I would spend, you know, one and a half hours every day just reading through my RSS feeds, following up on all the tech blogs, and then after that I would go to Facebook and spend an hour or more just reading everything that my friends are sharing with me. And we thought there has to be a better way to do this. There has to be a technology that should help you. So we figured out we should create some sort of an AI-style mechanism that understands what you're interested in, understands what your interests are in the sense of are you an expert in technology or a layman? Are you, do you like funny political stories or dry political stories? And then bring you exactly what you want at exactly the right time when you need it. Now you mentioned the intelligence. Do they know what I want based on my patterns of choosing various blogs or websites? So what we actually do is we look at everything you do online. So we can, we can connect to your Facebook account, we can connect to your Twitter account, to Google Reader, Evernote, whatever you use to interact with content. We can go in, analyze everything you do, so whatever you share, like, comment on, and so on, and then based on that, 
we can decide, okay, you're interested in this, this, and this. And then as you use News360, you actually get smarter about this. Now, that's interesting. We've seen some apps that, that do this. We've seen the Pulse, the Flip, those guys. W what gives you an advantage uh, over what is starting to be a growing marketplace? Right, so I mean, we're like, you know, Flipboard and Pulse, they're all focused on feeds. They're all focused on taking existing streams of content and visualizing, on the, uh, visualizing them on the iPad in a much better way. What we do is we try to connect you to content that you would not have otherwise found. We actually call ourselves kind of the anti-social newsreader, <laughs> which is kind of a funny quip, but what we do is we, we try to find things that your friend have not found. You know, the, the sources that you don't know about, the authors that you have never seen, but with content that is really, really re relevant to what you're interested in. And as a company, I assume you're growing, you've got some funding. How do you make money from this? Well, right now we're still kind of working on that. Okay. Uh, we're in growth stage, so we're trying to get as much audience as we can, get as many users using this as we can. Um, but we're working together with publishers to try and understand how do we take this value that we're creating, this connection that happens between um, a user and a source that he has never seen before, and then monetize it. All right, tell me how I can find this on my mobile device and, and what system do I need? Yeah, so we're pretty much any, any tablet or phone that you have, you can go to the respective App Store or Google Play or Windows Phone Marketplace or whatever you have, just search for News 360 one word and you'll be able to find it. We're on every platform. Uh, or you could just go to news360.com and use it there. All right, Roman Karachinsky, CEO, News 360. Thanks so much for coming by. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure. Still ahead on Tech Now, a Silicon Valley CEO uses social networking to raise money. How you too can help. And how do you shop for technology? It might depend on where you're from. Welcome back. We live in the social networking capital of the world. And now a Silicon Valley startup is helping us hook up one neighborhood at a time to look out for each other. Teddy Morse is fighting crime, helping her San Jose neighborhood get up to speed on Nextdoor.com, a Bay Area company that connects you with your neighbors. And by connecting with each other, neighbors are keeping their communities safe. It's a very basic premise, which is the more that neighbors know each other, the more likely they are to look out for each other. So we call it a social network. It's really more a social utility. It's something that people use to connect. That's the social part. But once they connect, the things they do are very useful. Because they're, this is a really good way to say, hey, I saw this vehicle, or I saw this person going door to door, or I saw this person looking over the fence and then we all look out for that issue. So it works out great. So great, the city of San Jose is putting Nextdoor to work, using the site to communicate directly with its neighborhoods. The aim is safety at a time when the city is losing police officers. One of the most important things we can do in our neighborhoods is to get organized, get our people connected. They help our police department immensely when they are. So this will be helpful in dealing with crime problems uh, as our police force has shrunk over the last decade. Knowing your neighbor, and there's done research on this, creates safer communities. You know, you're going to pay attention more. You're going to notice things that are, you know, that are amiss. You're going to make a call to the police, and you're going to care about what's going on. It's a no-cost touch of technology coming to and helping a neighborhood near you. Speaking of looking out for each other, here's how a Silicon Valley CEO used social networking technology to help one of the Aurora, Colorado shooting victims. Because of the racy content on its site, San Francisco-based Zivity is watched closely for every move it makes. But now Zivity and its CEO are doing something we can all get behind. It is personal to me because she's part of the Zivity family. Zivity CEO Cyan Bannister sat down with us to talk about Carly Richards, a 22-year-old who was shot inside the Aurora Theater, then rushed to the hospital. Before Carly went to the movie, she did a photo shoot for Zivity's website. We have a responsibility to each other as people to help one another. And um, she is part of a community, so she's part of a family, and so we want to help her. So Bannister put her money where her feelings are and paid Richard's medical bills. She's never met the would-be model, but says she feels a link. The good news about the internet is everybody is part of a community somewhere. You're, you're part of dig.com, or you're part of Facebook, or you're part of some group. And I actually think that's pretty neat, because we all look out for each other almost anonymously, through these websites. Bannister is now looking for ways to help other victims of the Aurora shootings, donating on a website called hopemob.org, while keeping an eye out for blog posts from one particular person. I hope that I do meet her. Um, I do hope that that photo set ends up on our site, and I hope that we'll be able to tell all of our members about her story. 
Cyan Bannister tells us she's since been able to raise more money to help other shooting victims. She's also been in touch with Carly Richards. Tech Now will be right back. Finally this week, think about how you shop for computers and other tech products. You probably do it differently depending on where you're from. On any given day in China, you'll find shoppers crowding into giant shopping malls hunting for technology. Compare that to America, where at all hours of the day or night, shoppers hunt and peck their way through internet shopping sites like Amazon or Apple.com. In fact, so many Americans have switched to online shopping, once thriving chains like Best Buy are now struggling. It's a cultural difference that was explained to us here on the campus of Santa Clara University. I think uh, the Chinese people are more comfortable buying something from a person they can see. Because America tends to have a very individualistic kind of culture, and this has been true for generations whereas Asian cultures tend to be much more collective. Think of it this way. Americans go online to spy and buy, while the Chinese are more likely to browse and build, carefully selecting each component right down to the graphics system. Chinese shoppers purchase more graphics, or GPUs, inside their systems than do Americans. So they can go to the mall and they can look at all the sellers that are offering CPUs or hard drives all at the same time. Um, and secondly, they can, because they put the computers together, either by themselves or have their friend do it for them, they can upgrade an individual component without throwing the rest of the computer. <laughs> the professors tell us the two cultures play video games differently too. Americans go solo, while the Chinese come together. Americans more and more live alone. Americans more and more want to be independent agents. And it makes a lot of sense that when it comes to buying technology products, Americans want to do it by themselves. Whereas in Asia, it makes total sense that they would do that in a way that would be more of a collective activity. Just some of the ways we shop, build, and play a little differently. And that's going to do it for this week's Tech Now. Thanks for joining us. We hope to see you back here again next week.